What's up everyone, important announcement, my POV videos are going to be postponed until further notice. It is snowing outside and there's an issue with the rear axle on my car, so I'm going to be pushing those back a bit. Sorry for any inconvenience, but I'll keep you guys posted on that. But in today's video, I want to talk about black and white photography, but more specifically how it has actually made me a better photographer. Okay, but before we get into black and white photography, um, my film negatives finally came back from the dark room, so I just want to shout them out. I just appreciate how quickly they received, developed, and sent my film back to me. Um, my negatives, obviously I didn't get any prints because I'm poor, but that's okay. I just needed um, some scans for some personal memory stuff just so I would have a place to uh, look back on the memories that I had photographed. Um, here are some of my favorites. Now when we talk about black and white photography, it kind of boils down to what a photographer is actually trying to capture. The goal of every photographer is to cause someone to feel, um, to remember something by the way their photographs are composed, by what's in the images, and um, color, color can really help with that, can cause us to feel moods in certain ways, helps us illustrate and show the viewer what they should be feeling when they look at this photograph. And when you shoot in black and white, you don't have that because colors like green and red look the same. And so then you have a bit of a challenge trying to merge these colors together so that you can have a more pleasing image. Typically when you're shooting black and white, especially when you're trying to improve in photography, it's important to go back to your old photos that are in color and see what they would look like in black and white. Most of the time you're gonna look back and you're like, whoa, those photos are not as good as I thought. In black and white photography, you can't really use colors to illustrate emotion. What you have to use is the highlights and the shadows and the composition. And those are the three things that black and white photography helps you master. It helps you master um, lighting situation, especially when you're shooting in manual mode, not aperture priority. For example, when uh, this can actually also be taught to you in film photography. Um, for example, I shoot on this Nikon. F. The great thing about this film SLR is I've actually learned shutter, aperture control, and such um, with this film camera. Because um, right now I don't have a light meter, which is my mistake. I probably should have one, but I've just learned to just look at something and figure out what uh, settings I should be using to capture that photograph. How I did that is a long story and I used uh, a technique called Sunny 16. If you guys want to have a breakdown of that, um, just comment below and I'll make that video. So black and white photography does in fact help you with um, composition and lighting because that's really all you're working with is the lighting and the contrast and how you're actually composing the image to create emotions from people. Now, I think black and white photography is really fun. Um, I don't shoot everything in black and white. In fact, most of what you see on my page is gonna be in color. I think there's two, maybe three black and white photos on there. Um, but when I'm practicing, I shoot in black and white. Especially when I get a new camera, I'll shoot, I'll go to the image profile and put it to monochrome, just so I can focus on learning to control that specific camera and its dynamic range. These are things black and white photography can help you do. And it has helped me improve as a photographer because ever since I've been practicing a black and white mind, not using a light meter and just kind of knowing how to tell what a scene's going to look like just based off my settings has um, greatly improved. Not to say that I'm a master, I would, I would like to call myself an advanced amateur. You're probably asking yourself, yeah, that's cool, Gabriel, but what are the strict advantages? Because I can also learn that stuff shooting color. Well, that's true. But with black and white photography, it removes that extra element of color, making it a little harder to create better compositions, more abstract and more authentic images for people to view. And so I would suggest, at least if you're practicing, um, I would say this to any beginner, um, shoot black and white, go to your image um, when you're editing and put it into black and white, or just don't think about the colors when you're taking that photograph. Focus on the shadows and the highlights and how that would look and black and white. Many times black and white photography has really game changer for some people because they really learn how to master contrast and, and lighting and the settings on their camera so that when they actually go to shoot in color, they're, they don't really have to worry about their settings. They can shoot as a pro would where the camera disappears 
and all they see is the shot in, in front of them and so that they don't have to really focus on the fact Sally's dress is red and Jim's is purple and that it contrasts because when you put it in black and white they're going to be shades of gray and, and, and black and that just looks I think black and white photography is just such a powerful way of um, learning to become a better photographer, um, especially if you're, um, uh, especially if you're a beginner. Um, obviously, I like to shoot film. Um, I do not only shoot film; I'm a digital guy myself. But I really enjoy the process of 35 millimeter film, and my hope is to get a um, 4x5 film camera soon, so that I can go and take a portrait series that I want to do. But I also have another portrait series I want to do with this completely separate. I want to do a, a portrait series on farmers in the Midwest. And so I want to do it on 4x5 and I've calculated it's going to cost me about a grand for just the film, uh, the development, uh, the camera, the lens, etc. It's actually fairly cheap. I just want to get uh, make a small book, 30 images, so that'll be about $1,500 for the whole project and um, that might have to be postponed till 2022 Merely based off of um, my financial situation. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video Keep your eyes out for a 2021 breakdown video Coming out in a couple weeks. I appreciate all the support I've been getting these past couple of weeks And if you want to check out any more of my work, you can go on my Instagram There is a link down below. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell notification, and I'll catch you guys next time.